<sighs> Good morning. Today is September 21st. We are going to be reading through the book of Matthew in the Bible together. I am reading the New Living Translation. If you're following along, you can read any book. We're going to pick up at the same spot we left off at yesterday, which is Matthew 19. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my husband is making a smoothie, so I'm just going to wait one second until the noise is done. I think we're good to go. <laughs> um, okay, Matthew 19, verse 1. Discussion about divorce and marriage. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went down to the region of Judea, east of the Jordan River. Large crowds followed him there, and he healed the sick. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with questions. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied. They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two, but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Then why did Moses say in the law that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away? They asked. Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not what God had originally intended. And I tell you this, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. Jesus' disciples then said to him, if this is the case, it is better not to marry. Not everyone can accept Jesus. Not everyone can accept this statement. Only those whom God helps. Some are born as eunuchs. Some have been made eunuchs by others, and some choose not to marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. Jesus blesses the children. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said this, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their hands and blessed them before they left. The rich man. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what, what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones, the man asked. And Jesus replied, You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all of these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. Then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, 
you who have been my followers will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon, and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one has hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in the vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more, but they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. It is against the law for me to do what I know. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first, and those who are first will be last. Jesus again predicts his death. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen. Listen, he said. We're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priest and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Then the mother of James and John the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request? He asked. She replied, In your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When the 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers in this world lord over it, Lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as ransom for many. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind them. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, 
Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly, they could see. Then they followed him. So that's the end of chapter 20. <clears throat> um, so there's like this recurring theme through uh, both chapter 19 and chapter 20 that um, the least important and the most important will be like switching roles. Um, and it basically, to me, that just means that we all need to humble, humble ourselves. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what your position is. It doesn't matter what your qualifications are, what's on your resume, how much experience you have in a specific area. You <clears throat> are just as important to God as the next person, as the next person, as the next person. It doesn't matter where they live and where you live, if they're poor or if you're rich or if they're a leader or if you're a servant, it doesn't matter. It says that <clears throat> the least important then um, will be the greatest when God comes back. And it says <clears throat> that whoever wants to be a leader among you must first be a servant and that even God, even Jesus was sent down Jesus, who is our Messiah, who is a leader, was sent down first to serve um, and to lay down his life for others. Jesus, who's who's all way up here, <laughs> came to serve you and me. Um, so again, like, don't let your head get big. Stay humble. Um, it doesn't matter what your position is. Pick up trash. Like, stay humble don't let anything get to your head because jesus didn't let anything get to his head even when people went to tell him how great he was jesus booked it he was like nope i don't need to hear this i have a mission my mission is to serve people that should be your mission too regardless of where you are in life um <clears throat> so i just think that was really cool and i also just want to go back um to chapter 19 when they were talking about uh like how can you get into heaven um and jesus was like mm, well humanly speaking it's impossible uh we cannot save ourselves we need to submit to god we need to submit like we need to acknowledge jesus we need to submit to god and we need to humble ourselves and listen. That is the only way. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. Like, so, and with God, everything is possible. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to go back and touch on that. Um, stay humble. Remember that Jesus came down and Jesus served us. Um, and so you should be serving someone today as well. Doesn't matter who it is. Remember that there are people, your, your neighbor is your equal. The homeless person is your equal. Um, the new king, Queen Elizabeth, the new king, they are your equal. Doesn't matter, status quo, everybody is your equal. Serve them equally. Love them equally. I will see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Please read your Bible. Um, and tomorrow we will pick up at chapter 21.